Rana Balla, great to have you back in Delhi, fresh from Washington after running a lot of the IMF. Uh, of course, thanks for being here. You know, I want to talk to you, first of all, about the broader question, which is capital account convertibility and whether we should head there. But first, you've also been writing about LRS and these changes and whether it should be 7 lakhs or not 7 lakhs and credit card or not credit card. So let's start with that. What's your sense of some of these changes and what do you think should be done? I think uh, we are definitely at a stage where the value contribution of these restrictions is negative, is zilch. Um, negative because it's unnecessary. Um, I don't know whether harassment is too strong a word, but unnecessary bureaucratic interference for data that the government already has. So in that sense, what's the logic behind it? And, you know, the seven lakhs should be removed to no amount. You know, you can send in whatever, as long as it is done to legal channels, which is all that we are talking about here. We do not know what happens in illegal channels. The government is concerned about deducting TDS um, on income that people have already earned and that they are legally allowed to spend abroad. If we go above the $250,000 per person limit, then that's a violation of the laws. And the government should clearly act on those. Um, I happen to think that, you know, 250,000 was um, brought in, in in 2015 or 16. Um, the Indian economy has been growing quite robustly. And maybe that should be expanded to eventually not have it at all. That's what the mark of a developed economy is. And we clearly have very reasonable uh, aspirations and ambitions to be a developed economy. And I think that's what we should be moving to. So let's come back to the question of capital account convertibility. Uh, that's, of course, the main subject I want to talk to you about. Is it time for India or is it premature to say, look, there's de-dollarization happening. The Chinese are trying very hard to make the yuan an exchange currency of some sort or the other. Now, there's no reason why India, as the third largest economy in the world a few years from now, we don't necessarily, we shouldn't be having a weak currency there. We don't need to be worrying about protecting it. We don't have to worry perhaps about foreign exchange to the same level. So say, move towards capital account convertibility. Let's do it in a phased manner so there are no external shocks. But at least let's start thinking about it and planning for it. Yeah, and I just want to emphasize what you just added. Do it in a phased manner. Absolutely. That was our original intent 25 years ago to do it in a phased manner. That was the intent 20 years ago or 18 years ago to do it in a phased manner. That's the official policy of the RBI, of the government of India and states. So absolutely, we should be now, we have not made any progress towards capital account convertibility since 2006 or 2015 when we expanded the LRS. And now we should move further in that direction to allow so that maybe if you want me, I would say the target should be no more than a decade from now, possibly by the end of this decade, we should have full capital account convertibility. And the time to start is now. All right. So let's try and get the roadmap from you. Let's say we say we want to move towards capital account convertibility 10 years from now. I mean, remember, we've just overtaken Britain. 10 years from now, India could be double the size of the British economy. So we'll be right up there. So by that time, perhaps we should be thinking about capital account convertibility. I'm making it sooner, 2030. 2030? Okay, even better. Seven years from now. Seven years from now, we want to move towards capital account convertibility. Now, if that is what we are doing, then what are the policies we should be setting into place? But obviously, in that situation, capital account convertibility, you're not going to be having LRS and $250,000 limits. Or it means you can do anything. You can send billions of dollars abroad, get billions of dollars back inside, complete freeing up. That's what capital account convertibility would mean. What do we have to do from now? Some of it we've discussed. Now you're asking for a roadmap, and unfortunately, I'm not in a position to outline the more roadmap. That's for the government to do. Okay, so your suggestions of a specific roadmap. Yeah, 
suggestions would make to the government. First, the very simple step of this credit card business, seven lakh business goes out of the window tomorrow. It should have happened yesterday. So that's number one. Then you say that, listen, perhaps in the beginning, the other one that the government has been trying to do, which is very important, that foreigners can buy our treasuries. Okay? Um, that is very much a part, a necessary part of capital account convertibility, that our treasuries are open. China has opened it and et cetera, and we will have to open um, our bond markets to foreigners. Okay. That's the second step. Hopefully that, and, and the government has explicitly talked about it. It was to come in last year or whatever, some suggestion. And I'll, you know, uh, so that will, should happen. I, I hope it will happen. Okay, what about Indians sending money abroad? What happens with that? I would phase it to, you know, maybe increase it every year as a, as a token right now, maybe 500,000 in a year or two, then a million, and then it's completely open up. Has to be done in a phased manner. But target is 2030, you'll be able to send out as much money as you would like. All right, Dr. Bhalla, uh, the advantages of what you're saying are clear. You're saying recognize your skills, understand your skills, have confidence in yourself. But now, what are the risks? Because I'm sure the government is looking at this entire discussion and saying, well, that's a nice idea, but there could be problems, there could be threats, there could be risks. So what are the risks? Okay, so what can go wrong? We've got $600 billion worth of reserves. Let me expand on that a little bit. What uh, the... A country's exchange rate or whether they have balance of payments problems are measured by the ratio of reserves of imports to reserves. How many months of imports does a country have? Months of imports in terms of reserves. Okay. India is amongst the top five countries in the world, excluding the oil company. So, you know, so I don't know what can go wrong, quite honestly. Uh, because let us see what we all agree on okay. or what the risks are, to put it in your terms. What we all agree on is that everybody, uh, hopefully even the opposition, that the Indian economy is quite robust, number one. Education has increased, though manifold, uh, though I think we still have some distance to go on improving the quality of education. But human capital of the Indian economy is considerably better than it ever was. Okay. So growth, if you now let's look at growth and human capital and investment, our investment rates are in the mid 30s. Our human capital is good. And therefore our growth rate is the best in the world. The best. Okay. So what can go wrong? You tell me. All right, Dr. Bhalla, you make a cogent argument. I think, look, I'm glad that this debate has at least started because as India has to grow, if India has to become one of the most developed, one of the most prosperous nations in the world, which I think is everyone's aim, it's important to debate and discuss and have all of these conversations out there so that they can actually be debated. I'm sure there will be people who have a different point of view. We would love to hear those different points of view. Please send them to us. We would like to see what the benefits are, what the pros are, what the cons are. And it's only with that debate and that discussion that we will take, uh, be making the correct policies and have the right steps to take the India story forward. Thanks, uh, Dr. Bhalla, for joining us.